Yo, 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 this is Big Boss from Oakland, California. Down here, I'm not too far uh, from my gym, 24 Hour Fitness, way down here on Fruitvale, at the end of Fruitvale and Alameda Street, right where Fruitvale uh, crosses over across the water to Alameda. That's one of Alameda Bridge right there. That's a draw bridge. That's a little water separating Alameda from Oakland. You know, we call Alameda, we call Alameda South Oakland. If Oakland had a South, it would be Alameda. But right here, like I say, I'm right here at the end of Fruitvale. Fruitvale, well, Fruitvale crosses over into Alameda. This is Alameda Street. But on this Alameda Street, unfortunately, we have... Um, homeless encampment a real big one of the bigger homeless encampment and this homeless encampment actually is been shown on news and things like that before um, and it's a shame this homeless encampment stretch all the way from this end uh, from Alameda well uh, Fruitvale it stretched all the way from this end all the way down to the other end which is High Street High Street is the other cross street um, and so what you're gonna see is a collection of trailers. There's not a lot of tents. This is not really a tent city. This one right here is hella trailers and cars. And it's just sad because it is literally right across. I can't say across the street. It's across the water from multi-million dollar homes. Million dollar homes in Alameda that have boats, right? <laughs> that have boats. For their backyard right so the disparity is crazy the disparity in oakland is crazy mm -hmm. boss i'm a boss big boss and you know it's real talk here you have oakland and over there you have alameda where they got boats the tell of two cities uh yeah so like i said we're about to take a walk down uh you seen one homeless encampment you seen them all but i'm just gonna go ahead and show this one right here in oakland now this is east oakland uh we have homeless encampments in west oakland as well and north oakland but this is east oakland right off of fruitvale uh fruitvale and Alameda Street and again this homeless encampment runs the whole length of Alameda Street right across the water from actual Alameda City with the nice homes with the boats on them. So we're gonna take a stroll
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like you see, uh, unfortunately, you know, it's a lot of homelessness here in the Bay Area. Uh, I haven't been down to uh, Southern California, Los Angeles in a while, while for years. But what I hear and see is real bad down there, too. Uh, it's really looking like California in general. You know, a lot of homeless has been exploding. And oh my goodness, over there in San Francisco in the city, you know, they show all the tourist stuff, but San Francisco, I would say have way more homelessness than even Oakland. But San Francisco is big, bigger. San Francisco have what? Over 800,000, 900,000 close to a million people. Oakland got like half of that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, just all around California, it, I don't know if it's because the prices of the homes and whatnot that went up you know real estate is crazy out here rents are sky high buying homes are sky high you know every little piece of square inch land out here in the bay area in california in general is very expensive yeah. so that doesn't help no. and then you know we could talk about some of these uh liberal policies that's in place high taxes and everything else too and and the soft on crime and drugs that doesn't help no. but yeah unfortunately homeless is rampant yeah but yeah though unfortunately homelessness is very rampant here in the bay area yeah. i can go on and on and show individual hot spots and intense cities and or encampments like places like this all over different spots of oakland let alone if I go to San Francisco, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I might just do that just to showcase it and highlight it, but it's really crazy, you know, and it's close to my heart because 10, 11 years ago, bossy boss, I was even homeless for a short spell. Yeah, your boy got a confession to make. Triple L, the teacher is homeless. Yep. Y'all like, no, no. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I got put out my place about two months ago. January 10th. My last day in there was January 11th. So that's my 111. <laughs> in 2011, so 111, 11, 1111. And ever since then, I've been sleeping in my cars in the parking lot of my job yep i got two cars a little red bucket putt putt mazda <laughs> and a, a jeep older jeep cherokee um needed somewhere to put my car so why not park them at my job and then i was like what the hey i just slept in them I'm trying to stack my money up so i can get a, a, a spot like I said, it's been about two months now. Being homeless is a trip. But yeah, this is uh, my little red putt putt right here. The little monster protege. Uh, old beat up thing. It's done me well though. You know, I bought it for like uh, 650 bucks a year and a half ago. It's conking out on me now, but it is what it is. Yep, so basically, this is my living room. <laughs> And my washer stuff, because I do go washing. 24 hour fitness bag. You know, I, I go work out and shower and everything. Yeah, so this is what it is, man. A little tiny space. It's my little living room. <laughs> I know y'all like, damn, teach like that. Yeah, it's like that sometimes. That's my living room. Now here's my bedroom. <laughs> yep. Jeep Cherokee. Remember when I got this paint job on it? Thousand dollar paint job. Anyway, all the good to do me now. So yeah, the Jeep, old Jeepo. Jeep. Yeah, horn don't work, huh? Yeah, so this is my bed where I sleep. This is where I sleep. In the back of the Jeep. Another episode by myself. Honestly, it's a good Bible right there. It's a good Bible. 
So yeah, man. It's a trip. Now look at my view. At least I got a nice view though, right? Look at that. Look at that field. Oh, the apartments, I should say condos. My bad. Condos, excuse me. Yeah, they probably look out their windows and watch the watch me sleep in my Jeep every night. Alright. I was homeless whereas living in my cars. I had two cars at the time. Uh, I put all my stuff in storage. I was basically evicted. I put all of my stuff in storage and I was working. Believe it or not, I was working. I was working and in school. I was uh, taking my criminal justice degree at uh, Merritt College Community College. I was working my security guard job at night and but I had nowhere to stay for months. I was living out of my two cars. I had a Jeep Cherokee and I had a little small little Mazda protege. And I eventually gave that Mazda away to this homeless couple, this white couple, Ken and Wendy. Shout out to Ken and Wendy, wherever you guys at. Uh, they were homeless. They was also living in their car. They had a, a old beat up brown uh, BMW, but it eventually got towed. So they were like literally living outside like in bushes and shrubs so right so even though i was homeless i just gave them my little monster car to live in and then i was in my jeep and a while after my jeep got towed so i was living outside oh, shit. and so uh shout out to the people at the church i was going to at that time uh you know they looked out for me or whatnot but i ended up going to my brother's house shout out to my little brother madman 08 I crashed at his house for about a week. His wife got tired of me being there. Shout out to his wife. <laughs> his wife got tired of me being there. So wifey did it, let her finger through the walking and found like a men's program for me to move into, like a halfway house. I think it was geared to guys with drug problems and guys, you know, matriculating out the system, uh, the jail system, right? But I needed it because I was homeless. So all of this happened at once and I was still working. But, uh, you know, so what I had did, hey, man, I I, I, I nuked by my own show. I just took my stuff, put it in storage, and I just lived in my cars. And I basically lived in my car down the street from a 24-hour fitness because, you know, I work out a lot. I was in there taking my showers, working out, being in Starbucks every day, reading a lot, in my phone, in my car, charging my phone, going to work. Oh, and I was still going to school at the time, uh, community college, taking criminal justice. I was right. I was still trying to work towards getting on um, with the police of Oakland Police Department. And um, so I wanted to get my two year associates in criminal justice or administration of justice. So I was going to college. I was going to junior college. I was working homeless in my cars, taking showers at the 24 hour fitness sitting up at Starbucks wow. doing my homework all day. You know, I'm like, wow. And so around that time, around that time, um, then I gave one of my cars away to another homeless couple who had, who they were living in the car. They car wow. got towed. They were, they was living outside. I gave them my little smaller car. I just gave, I just gave them the car. Just wrote it over to it. Like little bill of sales and piece of paper. Then yeah. now, now I'm, I'm only in my Jeep. My Jeep gets towed. I'm literally big boss lived outside for a full 24 hours. Wow. That was it. I said, hell no. I went to my brother's house. Shout out to my younger brother, who's my bigger brother. Uh, uh, crashed at my brother's house for about a week. His wife got tired of me being there. Shout out to her. She let her finger through the walking. You know, women. She let her finger through the walking. She right. found a, uh, a men's like halfway home um, called, I think it was called Pathway to Hope. Uh, mm -hmm. I moved, my, my brother took me over there. I moved in. I went to my stores. I took some of my stuff. Now, this living arrangement was like a lot of guys. Most of the guys in there had drug problems. Uh, they were in and out of jail and all this kind of stuff. My thing was just, oh, you know, financial kind of hardship, right? So, you know, shout out to all those guys. Um, I don't really keep in contact with none of them now. But since my situation was a little different, I was a regular working guy doing security. Uh, didn't have right. those problems. I was a little bit different from them. So the guy who ran the program, he made me the uh, the house the house leader. I was over all the guys. Right. I lived up in there and I ended up staying in that place for three years, right? Uh, 20, what's that? 2011, 2011 to 2014. 
three years. Eventually, the guy who ran it, Angel, shout out to Angel, the guy who ran it, he put me in charge of the other men because uh, he saw the way I get down. You know, I didn't have drug problems. I wasn't a criminal. I was working security. I was just homeless. So Angel made me one of the house. I was one of two of the house managers and he put me in charge of the other men and I stayed there for three years. I had my own room. Everybody else had to share a room. I had my own room. Uh, son, son will come through. There was some crazy years. I remember that. And then uh, the church I was going to at the time that I was a member of at the time, uh, shout out to the doggy, one of the little old church mothers there, she talked to her landlord and got me up in an apartment, uh, an apartment building she stayed in. So the landlord, shout out to the landlord, Mike, and I don't want to say your last name, but shout out to Mike, cool, older Asian guy. He moved bossy boss up in there. Uh, for a little bit of nothing for the low, no first, no last, moved me up in there. And I've been staying with him. And so I was there for a while. Then he moved me from that building. Uh, and this is all in North Oakland, where the program was, to his building in East Oakland, where I'm still at right now. So even to this day, my landlord is still Mike. Shout out to Mike. Mike is a real one. But yeah, I think back, back in 2011, when I was homeless in my car for five months, you know, I got evicted out of my place. Long story. I got evicted out of my place. I didn't really have the money for a first and last, and my credit wasn't that great. And so what I just did, I hogged up, I put everything in storage, took my two cars, both of my cars, parked them near like an empty lot near my job site that I worked at night and I would just work at night go to school in the daytime crash in my car when I didn't have to work on my off time or whatnot I would always be up in somebody's Starbucks with their Wi-Fi internet doing my doing my studies my homework or whatnot and I just dug it out for like five months I met a home a lot, a lot of cool homeless people this one homeless couple white couple Ken and Wendy uh, they were living in a brown uh, BMW that got towed, so I ended up giving them one of my cars, my little red uh, Mazda protege. I, I was then I was just staying in my Jeep, my Jeep Cherokee. I love that Jeep. It got towed. Then I was living outside. Then I said, "The hell with this." I went to my brother's house, crashed with my brother for about a week. His wife got tired of me being there. She found a spot for me which was a, a, a men's halfway house program. And I rocked out there for three years. And around that time, I was, you know, I got back in church and whatnot. And then, uh, you know, people in church knew my situation. And so one of the church mothers, shout out to her, uh, Sister Barbara, won't say her last name. I'm not putting nobody's last names out there, but uh, she hollered at her landlord. And Mr. Mike got me up in back in 2014. And Mike is still my landlord to this day, right? But I think back to that time when I was homeless and uh, homeless, you know, it's a special place in my heart. I always said, if I ever get rich from any kind of way, uh, at this point, hopefully it's YouTube, hopefully I can get that Kevin Samuels money. Shout out RIP, rest in peace to Kevin Samuels. If I ever run up a YouTube bag and get Kevin Samuels or Mr. Beast money, okay? Man, I'm I'm start a foundation for the homeless or something. And but in the meantime, in between time, I'ma see what I can do with my little ones and twos. Because this homelessness is out of control, been out of control here in California. And it's a lot of other things that gotta be addressed, right? Than trying to just worry about a band-aid. You gotta get to the real problem or it's gonna keep happening. And I I don't know if that comes from the laws. You know, local laws, uh, the local politicians going to have to put in place um, taxing or whatever. But, yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know, I, I think no one should be homeless. That's just my feeling. You know, I'm not a socialist or nothing like that. But still, in the land of the free with all this money, we got all these millionaires and billionaires and zillionaires. I think nobody should be homeless, man. Uh, homeless not a good thing no. but anyway this video is long enough yeah. you know what it is
Big Boss. Real talk from Oakland, California. Subscribe to the channel, Big Boss Real Talk. Peace. Like my last video, uh, I showed y'all. It was I shot it months ago, but I just recently put it out. All right here, it's still cars lined up, just like on the other end, down closer to where uh, the entrance of that shopping plaza with Home Depot, 24 Hour Fitness, and that McDonald's. This is the same street further down. But like I say, all the way, all the way from basically. Fruitvale to High Street, well, you see all this, this yellow uh, concrete dividers? It was all cars here. It was cars, mobile homes, all the shit. Homeless encampments, all of that. And the city came and cleaned it up.